one of the best books on on this is by Thomas Sowell. I've heard that name. Uh, mm -hmm. Black Rednecks and White Liberals. Okay, I have seen the cover of that book at bookstores before. I I, tell I think. people all the time out here. If you actually want to know about the South, read these two books: Black Rednecks and White Liberals by Thomas Sowell. He's a black man, born in North Carolina. Uh, but I think eventually his family moved to New York and lived in, uh, I think, Bro uh, the Bronx or something like that mm -hmm. uh, in New York. Um, highly educated guy. Um, and then also the second book is Hillbilly Elegy. Okay. Yeah, those two books explain the South I grew up in to a T. Mm. Uh, how, how so? Like what? what's well, the Hillbilly sort of... Elegy, well, I'll start with Black Rednecks, White Liberals. The fact that the uh, Southern Democrats were the slave owners. Mm. We'll just start there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, man. No, you're no, totally right. No, no one no one likes that when I bring that up out here. And I'm like, well, you forgot your history, man. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just how when black people were freed from slavery, the culture they adopted was the quote-unquote cracker culture. Uh. Poor white, Scotch-Irish guys who settled, you know, families who settled in, in the South. And, uh, you know, just as uneducated as them. Mm -hmm. And he just goes through the whole education system of the South mm -hmm. um, as well. Um, and and that debunks the uh, that debunks the this idea that they say that the parties flipped. Uh, that's BS. Right. I mean, the the South was the South was bankrupt after the Civil War. And so all these Democrats, a lot of them moved um a lot of them moved up north you know to get factory jobs because they're you know they're they're out of luck and a lot of these wealthy republicans come down to the south and buy up land so when you go to centralized areas you see uh you see a lot of uh very successful very well-to-do republican towns and then when you go to the outskirts you find these more dare i say racist people and that's because a lot of the people who stayed around 170 years ago they were very poor people who lived out in the country that had these sort of ideals and those ideals still have trickled their way down you know so yeah that's that's where they say that the party flipped happened but it wasn't they just moved to geographical locations so that's that's interesting that you say that but please keep going yeah i mean it's, it is the best book when it comes to the understanding of black and white relations in the south and then hillbilly elegy is is the best explanation of poor white people in the south mm. um and it's written by um jd vance he actually ran for ohio i think for the senate on the senate he ran for senator um this past year but anyways he was raised by a poor family in in ohio and uh he just traced his like his parents and grandparents and the dysfunction of that family and uh and how they moved towards these towns with factories mm. right um because we were a, we were a manufacturing country country at one time yeah and, uh, and i remember my town had two manufacturing facilities mm -hmm. in my small little town but i mean i think by the time i was 5 they were all shut, they were both shut down yeah and, you know uh, but anyways, he just explains like his how the his the Scotch Irish came to America, and then like these poor people would go to these cities and get these factory jobs, and then the factories shut down, mm -hmm. and they had no education, right? They couldn't find other jobs within the town, and so that's why you you have a lot of quote unquote poor uneducated Southern white people. Um, and he goes on just just through his personal experience, and they actually made a movie of it. Ron Howard directed it. 